fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Indians had been on the war path in the Southwest Territory. One small town after another felt the brunt of their attacks. The Apaches are coming. Get the women and children inside. And come on for the troopers. Even the ranchers were the object of the Apaches' vicious attacks as they moved to get horses and plenty of fresh meat. Hey, the Indians! They're burning the building! The Indian raiders had their stronghold in the foothills of the Sacramento Mountains, and a detachment of troopers which had been sent out to locate them had been ambushed, leaving few survivors. The commanding officer at Fort Stockton walked the floor in his headquarters office as he talked to his aide, Captain Elmore. Captain Elmore, the situation is grave. Very grave indeed. The massacre of our detachment of troopers is the last straw. But Colonel Lyford, what more can we do? Even the couriers we've sent asking for reinforcements have been intercepted, and the Pony Express can't get through. That's just it, Captain. We couldn't hold this fort against those Indians if they decide to attack. The only thing I see to do is abandon the fort before it's too late. Abandon the fort? But, sir, have you forgotten the settlers who've moved inside the stockade for safety? We couldn't leave them to their fate at the hands of those Apaches. Mm, that's true. That's true. Those settlers do present a problem. But by heaven, we must get word down to Fort Lancaster somehow. Those Apaches must have spies everywhere. They seem to know every move we make. What if we can't get reinforcements? We'll stay and do our best, Captain. As you say, we can't desert the settlers, no matter what the outcome. Oh, I just can't understand it. Frankly, the Apache seems so well organized. I'm beginning to believe someone with military training is advising them. But that seems impossible, sir. A white man who'd do a thing like that? I know, I know. There are vicious men among our kind as well as among the savages, Captain. Colonel, why not let me try to get through? It's our only chance of survival. What makes you think you might succeed where all of us have failed so far? I know this territory well, and I know the ways of the Indians. What do you say, sir? Well, all right, Captain. 
Start out at once and try to reach Fort Lancaster. And I hope to heaven you will make it. Captain Elmore rode from the fort that afternoon. The worried, determined look on his face changed to a smile of satisfaction as he stopped a moment on a hill and looked back at the fort. Oh, oh, there, oh. Reaching into his inside pocket, he took out an eagle feather and carefully stuck it in his cap. Then he started on along the trail. Get him! Get him! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, were riding up the Pecos River Trail at a slow pace. The Lone Ranger was saying, We'll have to keep our eyes open, Toto. From all reports, this is a territory in which the Apaches are on the warpath. That's right, Kimasabi. Them say Apache make many raids, kill plenty people. From what we have heard, those raids are planned. The same leaders behind them all. Their purpose seems to be to get horses, guns, and ammunition. Maybe that's right. Kimisabi. Yes, Tonto. Cloud of dust come over rise and distance. Someone's coming this way. We'll turn off into the Arroyo until he passes. Come on, Tonto. Give up, Scout. Easy, boy. Easy, easy now. Now, easy. Oh, oh. Oh. Whoever it is will pass by in a uh, moment. Better him not see us. Here he comes now. Uh, him coming over rise. Why, him wear a uniform. An army officer. But look, Tonto, there's a feather in his cap. Ah, eagle feather. Why him wear that? That's what I'd like to know. He must be riding from Fort Stockton. Ah. It's against army regulations for an officer to wear anything on his uniform except the official insignia and decorations. Tonto, let's trail that man for a short time. His life's in danger in this territory. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout! Meantime, Captain Elmore followed the trail for a few miles. Suddenly, as he rounded a bend, he came face to face with two Apaches on their ponies. Their rifles were ready, but they held their fire as the captain pulled to a halt. Oh, oh, there, hobo. Oh, oh. How? How? Hail face from Fort Wear Eagle Feather. Apache, watch, not kill. I bring news for great one who uses the sign of the Eagle Feather. Ah, you come. We take you to great one. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto pulled to a stop at the place where the captain had met the two Apaches. We stopped here, Toto, then turned off the trail. We see other hoof print. Look like marks of Indian ponies, Kimasami. They must have taken him prisoner. Oh, it's not like Apache on warpath. Take prisoner. Them kill from ambush. Strains them not kill officer. Because he is an officer, they may hold him as a hostage. Oh, maybe that's right. What we do now, Kimasami? The trail leads toward the foothills. We'll follow it. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scouts. For some time, Captain Elmore rode into the hills with the two Apaches. Finally, they entered a secluded valley, and the captain realized he had reached the Apaches' camp. They rode to the center of the camp and pulled rein before the chief's wigwam. The captain stood beside his horse waiting. Then the chief, in full regalia, came from the wigwam, accompanied by a man in the uniform of a Mexican officer. Good afternoon, Major Fernando. Oh, I welcome you, Captain Elmore. Chief White Deer, this is my friend from Fort Stockton. How? Oh. How? Oh. Chief White Deer, welcome, friend of Great One. Thanks to the eagle feather you gave me, Major, I was able to get here safely. Well, of course, amigo. The chief has ordered all his braves not to harm those who are the eagle feather. You bring news, perhaps? Yes. Good. We are anxious to know conditions there, senor. The colonel has only about 50 troopers. He's been unable to get dispatches through to either Fort Davis or Fort Lancaster. <laughs> bueno, bueno. Yeah. Go on, Capitan. He wanted to abandon the fort and take the men to Lancaster. But I persuaded him he should remain to protect the few settlers within the stockade. Ah, you have done well, amigo. And soon your reward would be great. Fort Stockton must be the first to fall and then Fort Lancaster. Ah, uh, that's right. Once they are in our hands... 
Forts Quitman, Leighton, and Davis will fall easily, since they will be cut off from the east and are closer to the border. Then what will happen, Major? <laughs> uh, amigo, the American nation will think all this is just an Indian uprising. They will not realize until I move in my rebel soldiers from the mountains across the border that I, Juan Fernando, have moved in and conquered the entire territory between the Pecos River and the Rio Grande. Ah, the Great One will rule land justly and treat Apaches as brothers. But of course, of course. You have my word, Chief White, dear. We are allies, no? And together we shall succeed because we shall follow the rule of divide and conquer. The United States and Mexico may join in taking up arms against you, Major. Oh, no, no, Senor Capitan. I shall at once make peace with El Presidente Diaz of Mexico and offer him the new territory. Oh, with the understanding, of course, that I am to be territorial governor. I feel sure that he will agree. <laughs> Uh, when do you plan to send the Apaches against Fort Stockton? At dawn tomorrow, perhaps. Then, before the news reaches Fort Lancaster, we shall strike there. Chief White Deer, have Apache braves ready to attack. See, si, that is good. And now, uh, let us go into the wigwam to discuss the plans in detail. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Toto follow the trail of the captain and the two Apaches through the foothills. Toto noticed many Indian signs along the way, but he and the Lone Ranger managed to reach a ridge overlooking the valley without mishap. They reined to a halt in a grove. Look, Kimasabi, Indians have big camp in the valley. I use my binoculars. What you see. The officer we saw wearing the eagle feathers with a chief and a man in what seemed to be a Mexican officer's uniform. Oh, that's not good. Now they're going to the chief wigwam. The officer we saw coming from the direction of Fort Stockton must be a traitor. Ah. There are hundreds of Indians in that encampment, Toto. The troopers must be told about them. Well, maybe Apache watch trail the fort. Not be easy to get through. That Mexican officer may be the leader I spoke of earlier today who plans the attacks. Maybe that's true. As you say, the Apaches are probably watching the trail to Fort Stockton, as well as the one to Fort Lancaster. It's strange. Officer ride trail from Fort and not be hurt. That's true, unless... Unless what, Kimasabi? Unless there was something known to all the braves which would indicate that he was not to be harmed. But them be quick to shoot at uniform from ambush for him get close enough to see face. Yes, but there was something different from other men in uniforms. The eagle feather he wore in his cap. Oh, that right. Maybe Eagle Feather, worn by a white man, mean Apache not shoot him. I think we've hit it. Tonto, don't you usually carry an extra feather or two in your saddlebag? Uh, me have Eagle Feather. Here, you take him. Good. We're right. This feather should guarantee my safety on the trail to Fort Stockton. Tonto, you head for Fort Lancaster and tell the commandant there about the Apache encampment. Uh, Be careful. Take back trails whenever you can. Me be careful, Kimasami. The presence of that army officer in the Apache camp... They mean that they're planning to attack Fort Stockton. We helped Colonel Darby at Fort Lancaster once before, and I'm sure he'll remember you. Ah. Tell him troopers were ambushed in this territory a few days ago and massacred. So the force at Stockton is depleted and in need of reinforcements. Me tell him. Adios, Tonto. I'll wait at Fort Stockton for you to return. Adios. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Call to continue. After seeing the Apache camp, the Lone Ranger and Toto separated. The Indians started for Fort Lancaster, while the masked man headed for Fort Stockton. It was dusk when the corporal of the guard knocked on the door of the colonel's office. Come in. All right inside you. Thanks. Colonel, we halted this masked man at the gate. He insisted on seeing you, sir. Great day. I've never been so glad to see anyone as I am to see you, my friend. Hello, Colonel Lafford. But, Colonel, sir, the mask. I know all about it, Corporal. This man is a good friend of mine. You and the guards may leave now. Yes, sir. I don't know how you got through. No one from here has been able to make it. Let's sit down. Thanks, Colonel. I'm worried about the situation here. I have only 50 men. The Apaches knew that they'd surely attack. I'm sure they do know by now, Colonel. That might be. They seem to know every move we've made recently. But if Captain Elmore gets through to Fort Lancaster... Captain Elmore? Yes. He came here a couple of months ago as my aide. He knows his territory well. I see. And he left for Fort Lancaster earlier today? That's right. He took a dispatch to Colonel Darby. Colonel Darby won't receive it, sir. What makes you say that? Do you think he was ambushed by Apaches? After all, if you managed to get He through... wasn't ambushed. I wasn't either. And I believe it was because of this eagle feather here. Yes. I noticed when you removed that feather from your hat. What does that have to do with your getting through? You might say this is the sign of a traitor. Traitor? Oh, come now, my friend. No one can ever say that you're a traitor. I'm talking about Captain Elmore, Colonel. What? Todd and I saw him on the trail. He wore an eagle feather on his hat. He rode for some distance without harm... And he met two Apaches. What? What happened? They led him to the Apache encampment. Todd and I trailed them. Through my binoculars, I saw the captain talking to the chief and to a Mexican officer. Great day, my own aid, a dirty traitor. That seems to be it. I had a feeling those Apaches had a military man telling them what to do. That Mexican officer must be the man. I think so. We're cut off here. If they attack knowing our situation, we're done for. Tato headed for Fort Lancaster. If he gets through, you should get reinforcements by morning. Do you think he'll make it? I sincerely hope he'll make it, Colonel. Uh, what do you suggest we do in the meantime? Make every possible preparation to fight off an attack. The fact that your aide went to the Apache camp today might mean the time is near to take the fort. Then you think that they may attack at dawn? I think it's possible, sir. I'll alert the men to do all they can to be ready. What are you going to do? Give you what help I'm able to give, Colonel. If Tano gets through, we have a chance. If he doesn't, well, we'll go down fighting together. That night in the chief's wigwam, Major Fernando was talking to Captain Elmore and Chief White Deer. It is arranged, Capitan, that we attack at dawn. Ah, Apaches take fort. The fort is strong, but with only 50 men and a few panicky settlers to defend it... It shouldn't be long before the Apaches take it. Uh, there, there is a bit of strategy in which you will take part, amigo. What's that? Since we have much more to do before we take the territory, it is necessary that we lose as few braves as possible, no? That's logical, Major. Uh, I knew you would agree, Senor Capitan. Now, here is the part you play. At dawn, we shall be hidden just over the ridge in front of the fort. When I give the signal... You are to gallop toward the fort, pursued by three or four braves who will shoot arrows over your head or to the side so as not to hit you. But why do you want me to do that? Do you not see, amigo? The guards at the fort will think you have returned and that you are being attacked by a few Indians. They will open the gates to let you in. Then the big attack will take place. But the ridge is some distance away. I'll get inside and the gates will be closed before the Apaches reach them. Of course. But you pretend you have escaped with your life. Later, you open the gates for us. It's good. Pale faces at fort, not expect attack. Them have sleep in eyes, fear in mind. They will not see if Capitan loosens bars of gate. Then Apaches ride fast, get inside fort quick. Then they take fort. I didn't figure on doing anything like that. <laughs> so, perhaps you fear for your safety, amigo. You will not be harmed by the Apaches, and surely your own soldiers will not shoot you. Uh, all right, if that's the way you want it. Bueno, bueno, amigo. You will be rewarded greatly when all my plans have succeeded. And now, now I suggest that you go to our wigwam and rest until the time comes to leave for the fort, Senor Capitan. All right. I'll see you both in the morning. Good night. See. Si. 
Me watch close. Pale face captain have much fear. Maybe him not follow plan. <laughs> yeah, I do not intend to give him a chance, Chief White dear. He serve his purpose. He knows too much about our future plans, so we dare not take the chances that he might talk, no? No, uh, it's better him die. That is really my plan. See that you pick braves to follow him. Braves who will not miss Chief White Deer. Uh. Before the pale-faced captain reaches gate of fort, the arrows of Apache braves will silence his lips forever. Meantime, during the night, there was great activity inside the fort as everyone made ready for the expected attack. Dawn found the colonel and the lone ranger standing on the rampart near the big gates, looking out over the slope that stretched up to the ridge beyond. The colonel spoke. Well, everything out there seems peaceful enough. I've seen it that way before, colonel, when an attack was about to begin. Yes, yeah, so have I. Well, the sun's just over the horizon. If anything is going to happen, it should start soon. I was hoping Toto and the men from Fort Lancaster would arrive before daylight. I don't like to dash your hopes, my friend, but... Well, look, someone galloping towards the fort. Several Indians are following him, Colonel. Look. Great Dave, that's Captain Elmore. Let's get down to the gates. Quickly, the Colonel and the masked man went down the ladders to an opening in the stockade near the gates from which they could watch. Well, the shooting arrows had him. Tie them back, men. Use your guns. <laughs> are turning back. Look, the captain has been hit by an arrow. He's fallen from his horse. He's fallen a short distance from the gates. I'm going out after him. He's trying to crawl, but he's badly hurt. Don't risk it. After all, knowing what we do... I've branded him as a traitor, Colonel. But he should have the right to explain. We can't let him die out there. Tell the men to open the gates for me. All right. Open the gates and let the masked man through. Quickly! Come back! The Indians are coming over the ridge. I must bring that man in. Tell your men to cover us with gunfire. Men, cover the masked men as he goes through the gate. As the colonel and the men watched, the Lone Ranger ran out to where Captain Elmore lay wounded. The men in the fort kept up rapid gunfire to cover him as he picked up the wounded officer and started back. The Indians were not yet quite within range to harm him, but in another moment it seemed that he must fall a victim to their bullets. Run! Run! You can't make it, Colonel. We better close the gates. He must make it. He must. Don't touch those gates. The Indians will be close enough to kill him in a minute. As the colonel and the men watched tensely, the Lone Ranger ran with his heavy burden toward the open gates. Another minute and he'd be inside. Then he stumbled and fell. He, he's a done for. Close the gates before it's too late. Troopers. Look. Troopers from Fort Lancaster. <laughs> As the Lone Ranger fell, he realized that it meant death. Grabbing his guns, he raised on his elbows and emptied them at a uniformed figure and a few Apaches who had just moved within range. At that moment, the Lone Ranger, too, heard the welcome sound of the bugle. Toto, Toto and the troopers. Thank heavens he's safe. For another moment, the masked man lay watching as the troopers moved in and fought the Apaches, whose only thought now seemed to be to get away. Men poured through the open gates of the fort, as the colonel and some of the men came running toward him, the Lone Ranger stood up. My friend! My friend, are you all right? Yes, thanks, Colonel. There's a wounded man in uniform out there. Will you have your men bring him inside? I think he's a Mexican officer I mentioned. Yes, yes, of course. Sergeant, yes, you see that that man out there is brought into the port. Yes, sir, that's me. Come on, please. Both got both, both better. Oh, Tuttle. She was sorry. Oh, you see the commandant from Fort Lancaster riding this way. We'll all go into the port. Bring Captain Elmore inside, men. Later in the quarters which the colonel and the captain had shared, several men stood around a cot on which Captain Elmore lay. They listened intently as the captain spoke weakly. I, I'm done for, Colonel. They planned to kill me. I know that now. You will be all right, Captain. No, no. Anyhow, it, it's better this way. I don't deserve to live. I, I was a traitor to my country. I know. My masked friend knew. He. He knew? Yes. 
He was clever enough to figure out the meaning of the eagle feather. He saw you wearing it. But though he knew he, he risked his life to save me. He's a brave man and a just one, Captain. That's right, Colonel Darby. But why did he do it? Because he had branded you as a traitor in my presence. He felt you should have a chance to vindicate yourself, if possible. I, I never knew any man could be that fine. What, what of Major Fernando? The masked man wounded him. The Major confessed everything and will pay for his crimes. The Apaches will be punished along with their chief. I, I'm sorry about everything. I'm sorry too late, Captain. An officer who betrays his trust, becomes a traitor to his country, deserves neither sympathy nor forgiveness. I agree, Colonel. The man who tried to save your life, who risked arrows and bullets for you, was willing to believe that he might have been mistaken. It's hard for such as he to concede that any American could be a traitor to these great United States. Tell me, Colonel... Who is he? Who is the... The captain is dead, Colonel. And he didn't have the satisfaction of knowing that the great American who risked his life for him is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.